Network Studios proudly presents D13 Live 2.0. Your protection from deception. As the world grows darker, we must stand together and stand out in truth. The truth in Jesus Christ. Welcome to D13 Live 2.0. Welcome, everybody, to a Saturday show we're doing tonight with Mr. Drew Bloom from Drew Bloom 34. Uh, very interesting and a very important topic tonight. We're going to be talking about how fallen angels and demons masquerade as beings of light. Uh, we're going to go step by step through the scriptures and we're going to show people how they operate and and how you know extremely important it is to stay in the truth of the word and to be very careful of how deceiving and cunning these spirits can be um welcome drew are you with us i am here thanks for having me brother good to be here yeah it's always good to have you with us excellent so i know you've been dealing a lot on this subject on your channel <laughs> I would almost go as far as to say I, I specialize in it. Yes, you, you do, know. for sure. <laughs> um, you know, and, that's, and, that, and I truly believe that's something that God has called me to do because, you know, a lot of people know my testimony and they know that uh, early on in my Christian walk, I was duped. I was lied to or, um, you know, as, when I was a babe in Christ, uh, you know, I was suckered in by a uh, false prophet. And I didn't like it, and it didn't feel good. And I think God showed me that, or had me go through that early on, uh, to show me um, that it's okay to not sit there and take it. And so I made a, uh, uh, I don't want to say that I made it, you know, as, as a vengeance type thing, but I knew that God was calling me to make sure that, um, that these falls, at least from what I could do on my small part, that I would at least speak out, and stand in the truth of Christ, uh, because there's far more uh, false prophets out there than there are true teachers of sound doctrine. So I'm going to stand up and do everything I can to uh, make sure that I can um, be a voice of opposition uh, to these fakes. So that's what I'll do. Yeah, because, I mean, I know, you know, you teach a lot on the warnings. Um, I believe it is a First Timothy, you know, where it clearly says that in the latter days, there will be lots of false prophets and false teachers. There are so many warnings in the New Testament that if one went through, and, and that's actually one of the things I'm going to do these uh, one of these days, is go through and just put a little booklet together on how many warnings that Jesus, his disciples, his apostles have put to make sure that please don't be deceived in the end times. And it is astonishing how more people are not noticing that or heeding the warnings that we are to be taking. Everybody is on a different page because everybody listens, it seems, to a different teacher who is preaching something sensational and undoctrin, uh, undoctrinal. And uh, it's, uh, it's, to me, it's astonishing how many people are not heeding these warnings. Be not deceived, be not deceived, over and over again. Yet there are so many who are deceived and following willy-nilly teachers who care not for the truth of Christ. That's right. I mean, I, I, mean, I can't even keep up with how many... You know, teachers are out there that are saying, you know, they've had visitations from Jesus himself. They they talk to angels daily um, that there are, you know, people having, you know, all these visions. They've been taken into that into heaven. They've seen, you know, the kingdom. You know, I know there's um, some of the big teachers out there like, um, oh, shoot, what's his name? The guy that said he went to heaven pretty much made a couple of Yeah, Duplantis. Yes, he Duplantis. Yeah, he went to heaven on a... Uh, trolley car uh, yeah which, the trolley car ride which yeah which in and of itself is is so absurd on its face 
that, that there, it, it, I find it fascinating that people actually got past that first part to even listen to the second part of that story because had that been me, you know, I know he's been saying that I believe since the 70s. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but um, uh, he's he's been saying that quite a long time. I would have gotten right up wherever that was listening. I would have walked right out. It is such fantasy. Well, I remember when that first came out, um, we were in the Assembly of God Church, and of course the, the VHS tapes came in, and everybody thought this was just amazing. You know, it was just unbelievable. We all had to watch it, and... I remember as a teenager watching that tape, and even back then I was like, this doesn't even make any sense. I mean, the guy's sniffing leaves and eating golden fruit and talking to families, and, you know, he's right. like, there's some people on the grass there, and he said, oh, as you stepped on the grass, the grass wouldn't even get crushed, and I talked to this family, and they had just died in a plane crash, and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, doesn't the Bible say that the dead in Christ rise first? Why are they already? I'm like, this doesn't add up here. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. And, and you know, one thing that I always have to be careful that I don't do is um, come across as bashing the followers. It's never my intention. I know that the followers are deceived. They're the ones who've been caught up in this drama. And, you know, it's no wonder we, we say the scripture over and over again that Satan uh, masquerades as an angel of light. And this is a perfect example. Um, somebody just comes with you. They seem so convincing. You know, my goodness, this, I think this guy's telling the truth. You know, they say within themselves. And next thing you know, they're buying the book. They're getting the five set CD deluxe package autographed. They're subscribing to the newsletter and they're tithing. So, by this guy coming forth, this is just one example that we're using right at the beginning. Right at the beginning here is he comes forth and tells this fantastic tale, which goes against scripture, but it just sounds so convincing. And as a result, you can imagine off just one person as an example, he's made a fortune. Oh yeah, and uh, that person Millions is his hook. Now, up until now, the the example has been, unfortunately, there's been very few to step forward. And to insert themselves into it and say, you're a liar. You are a liar and you're deceiving the lambs of Christ. Um, there's not been enough of that because everybody says that, um, you know, they get the first part of Jesus. You know what I mean? That he's all love. Uh, he's forgiving. He's long-suffering, patient, all the wonderful things. But he's also fierce when it comes to preaching and protecting the truth of his word. So we see samples of that in Matthew 24. The entire chapter is what I call the Jesus beat down chapter. And seven times in that one chapter along in that one chapter alone, he calls the Pharisees hypocrites. In that one chapter. Now there's a great scene that was illustrated, I felt, in Jesus of Nazareth. I think they they kind of did it the best in that 1977 movie where he does, you know, Jesus does the woes, woe unto you, Pharisees, hypocrites. But he also goes on to call them children of hell, vipers, snakes, a couple other names. That's the part of Jesus that most of the Christians seem to forget. Oh, they don't want you bringing that up either. They don't like that because Jesus is all about love and that is that. Right. And they just can't fathom that somebody would speak the way you do, Kip. How dare you? Jesus never talked like that. And I just, you know, when they say that to me, I'm like, are you kidding me? My good. I better not say that after Matthias last night. But <laughs> yeah, wow. <yeah. laughs> but, you know, it's wow. Are you kidding me? Have you read the Bible? Jesus spent a great deal of time debating with the false teachers of his day and laying down the correct doctrine. You know, we are to, when you, when you get you know, a precious jewel, for example. You know, yeah, you take it out and you show it everybody and you shine it out so everybody can see it, but you also protect it. And unfortunately, the people are forgetting about the protect part, and this is what the warnings all pertain to. You know, would you come home and just throw that jewel on your counter and then, you know, leave the house, go down to the grocery store without locking your doors? And the answer is no, you wouldn't. You would protect that, especially when your king commands you to protect it. Uh, but that's the part that everybody's missing, and they're unwilling to do that. 
you know? Yep. I mean, growing up in the church, you know, I went through a lot of stuff. I was at the Brownsville Revival in Pensacola, Florida. I mean, we went through the the gold dust stuff, the oil coming out of the hands. I mean, I've witnessed that stuff firsthand. I've seen how it deceives people. And, you know, the one thing I want to re get really clear, and I'm sure you're clear on this as well, you know, too, is the reason why we point these things out and why we say this person's teaching a false doctrine or this person is being a false teacher, it's not because we hate them. It's not because, you know, I'm going to sit here and go, well, I'm better than them because of this or that. You know, that is not it at all. I am so concerned for these people. I mean, we were talking yeah. about this before the show. I mean, people really need to understand how serious this is. Jesus was serious, dead serious. This is a, you know, eternal um, conflict, you know, that has to be, I, I can't even put the words to how serious it is, you know, I mean, this is a life and death matter of, you know, especially young Christians that are new to the faith, you know, I'm not against the heavy meat teachings, and I've said this before, I'm not against people reading extra biblical books, that's fine, if you are reading the main scripture first and foremost, then you can go read those things, and then you have to go back and forth and say, oh, well, you know, maybe this doesn't add up here. Right. But what my concern is, is just telling people that we do this out of love, because even in the scripture, um, I can't remember offhand which word it is, but, you know, God chastises those whom he loves. Now, what is chastisement? Well, there's going to be some sort of a form of a rebuke. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we look at the rest of the world, you know, you can be a full-blown Satanist and that person's made their decision. That's what they're going to do. God's not going to punish that person because that person is not proclaiming to be a believer in Christ. He's not. So people like that won't get chastised. But if you're a Satanist and you now have converted to believing in Jesus Christ, believing on him and his completed works in Calvary, and then he's still trying to practice Satanism, guess what? He's going to go through some suffering there. He's going to go through that chastisement because God is going to be cleaning that out of that person. Right. And that's what people need to understand is our job, yours and mine as believers, as teachers of Scripture, our duty is to do what Christ said. And if we're not doing that, then we're in trouble too. Because I can't sit here and just allow things like that to go on without saying, you know, this is wrong. I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm showing people what the scripture says. Right. In my Bible, it says this. I mean, if it wasn't in the scripture, then I wouldn't even go near the subject. I wouldn't need to. Right. And here's the, here's the real key. And, and everybody in chat, I need you to listen to me. Everybody, I need your attention. Listen up. We just saw something that happened fairly recently, if you've been watching, with a, a certain user named Cat T. Now, Cat T, twice within a 30-day period, falsely prophesied the rapture. Okay, we know this. Everybody saw it. Did we learn anything from it? And maybe to a fourth, they did. But I'll tell you what, there are still subscribers on Cat's channel who are waiting for her to come back because they dig her for whatever reason. They like the way she spoke. She seemed to have authority. They liked her voice. Whatever reason, there are people that did not learn. But we've seen this over and over again. I've been specifically on YouTube since about 2010. Now, I haven't been doing too many videos since then, but I've been watching. I remember watching as they prophesied the rapture in 2011, right at the Feast of Trumpets, people were going berserk and nothing happened. And it's been like that every year since then. And the shocking part for me is that nobody held these teachers accountable, or very few people held them accountable. And in fact, their subscriber base grew and grew and grew. You got a guy named Bro Mike Man of God who has falsely prophesied the rapture. He has falsely called down death upon another human being, a lamb of Christ, and he got away with it. 
Now, I know in the beginning, Kip, you said this is so serious that people can't understand. Bro Mike, man of God, actually believes that he's doing God's service. Even after calling down death upon another human being, his sub base grew. He comes every day and says, yo, you know, I was just talking... I was just talking to Jesus, by the way, and he wanted me to tell you something. And people just, oh my gosh, I better listen. This guy called down death upon somebody and, and falsely prophesied. So getting back to your point, Kip, how serious is it? So serious that Deuteronomy 18, God commanded death. He didn't suggest it. He commanded that if somebody does this, they put, be put to death. But nowadays, you get a healthy sub subscription base all kinds of donations, and you just get to keep on going with your idiotic statements, unscriptural doctrine, yada, yada, yada. Just a couple of examples of what's happening out there, which is alarming, startling, and astonishing that people who proclaim to love Jesus Christ in his truth are not holding their teachers accountable. I mean, I have a good example that just came to me now. I mean, I think I can, this is the best I can do it to get someone to understand how serious this stuff, kind of stuff is. When I was young and stupid, you know, I was an alcoholic. Um, one night I got into a fight with a roommate of mine. We got into a massive fight. Um, a, a firearm got pulled on one another and it was really bad. Um, I went out in my vehicle drunk and I drove over a bunch of road signs and after doing that, you know, um, another person on the highway hit one of those signs, blew his transmission out. He ended up getting into a bunch of trouble as well because he was drinking too. The whole night was a mess, but under the influence of alcohol, I didn't care. I was just doing what I was doing and I didn't care about any other person or anything else. I didn't care if I killed anybody that night, including myself. Completely oblivious because I was drunk. Well, I tell you what, that next morning when the police car showed up in front of my house, um, it was a whole different thought process. You know, when, when I got basically arrested and the, it was the first time I'd ever been arrested, first time I'd ever had to deal with the legal system. And I tell you what, that first day walking into that cold courtroom and sitting in that chair and the judge comes out, I had never felt a fear like that in my entire life. All wow. the times I'd been in trouble with my mother and father, you know, before I left home, was nothing compared to this fear of being in a room full of strangers, and I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know anything about how the legal system worked. I didn't know about having a lawyer. I just pled guilty because I didn't know any better. And when right. I pled guilty, they threw the book at me. I got a 30-day jail, 30 jail sentence suspended. But I didn't know what that meant. I thought I was going to jail. And I just yep. broke down in the courtroom. I started bawling. I literally fell on the table. And I just started bawling in front of the judge because I didn't know what to do. But to me, that is a drop in the bucket of what it's going to be like when we are on Judgment Day, when we face God, when we face Jesus at that judgment seat. It's going to be similar to that, only a lot more worse. And we said this the other night, no one else is going to be there with you. It's going to be you and God. No one's going to be there to vouch for you. No one's going to be there to say, oh, wait a minute, God, but he did this. That's, that's not going to happen. This is why we do these shows. This is why we are trying to warn you people of what these other false teachers and false prophets are doing because we're concerned. We don't want to see you go through, you know, a harsh punishment or what they're going to have come down on them. They're going to have some supreme condemnation coming down on them for what they've done. We don't want you to be part of that. We want to pull you away from that and get you grounded in the, into the words of Jesus Christ. So you don't have to, so you can be held more blameless, as the scriptures say. Right. Amen. And that's, you know, it's, that's a great story, by the way. Um, and I know you felt the fear of God. And it's a good example because uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't look at it like that. You know, if you felt that much fear in your human shell, exactly, how, how much more is it going to be when, when everybody stands before the living God? You know, even I think people who love Jesus with all their heart, uh, myself included, we still cannot comprehend what that day is going to be like. It is going to be 
terrifyingly amazing. You know, I know the people that love Jesus were not to, but not to fear God, but we are still going to shake in our knees in awe of, of this God who is suddenly in front of you. Um, so praise be to God. I don't want to be one of these people. Um, and like you said, Kip, we want to wake them up. When I pray, um, even though I know I make some, um, some videos which some people would call harsh, but it is necessary. It's to show these people that the doctrine that they preach is so absurd. I, I wouldn't do this. I, I do not attack anybody who's a Christian. When they preach a false doctrine, a doctrine of a devil, they're not in the body of Christ. When Susan Waldrop says, well, I went to heaven and I played darts in pool. No, no, you didn't. No. You are a liar. And it's ridiculous. And then, oh, I saw Jesus and he looked very Jewish looking. How insulting and blasphemous to say that. Uh, I won't even get into that part. But I later found out today, thanks to Cheryl. I don't know if you guys know who Cheryl is over at CB here. Uh, fantastic channel. Solid in scripture. Go subscribe to her if you have not seen her. Um, she's not going to lie to you. And I know she was painful because recently she came away from some people um, who are similar to you, Kip, that you told me before, and I'll let you tell it if you want, but I won't say anything. But sometimes it's hard when you have to pull away from people uh, because you're the one who's standing in the truth of Christ. And Cheryl just went through that also. And she stood her ground in the truth of Christ. And she lost friends and she lost subs. But I'll tell you what she gained. She gained Jesus Christ. She gained more of Jesus Christ. She gained the 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 knowing that she stood in the truth of Jesus Christ, and forgive me for flubbing my words a little bit, it gets a little emotional. Uh, but that happens. You're going to lose friends when you stand in the truth of Jesus Christ, and you don't go along with the crowd, and you don't say, well, you know, I'll just bite this one. I don't agree with everything, but I'm just going to hang in there. No. You've got to stand in the truth of Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you, when you do it, sometimes it can be a very lonely feeling, but God gets you through it. And it's by his grace, by his might, that he gets you through it. Um, and I forgot even what I was saying before, but <laughs> when you look at these, these false prophets and they have such a ridiculous doctrine um, and they tell it and, and to watch your brothers and sisters fall for it. I mean, I, I always said this to everybody that I, that I talk with on, um, who come against me and say that I'm just mean, you're just, you're just mean. I said, let me ask you something. If you had, if you saw your brother or your sister getting the crap beat out of them across the street, would you just pass on by and say, well, I'm, I'm going to say a good prayer for them and peace be with you and cross the street and just keep walking. And, you know, I know most of you say that if it was your brother and sister, you wouldn't. You'd pick up a stick, you'd run across, you'd run across the road and you'd start to defend your brother or your sister. And that's a fact. Now, why won't you do it for your fellow mankind? Why does it have to be only a physical altercation? No, the worst kind is the mental altercation when somebody is lying to you, when somebody is falsely prophesying that the rapture is going to happen this weekend, and it doesn't. And then, oh, I meant 30 days down the line. I forgot to forgot to add the 2 and subtract the 13, and I forgot to add the, the 3 for the letters of my nickname. And so now we've got the date set. It's going to happen, but people hang on, and they hold on, and, and it happens again, and they still don't leave that false teacher. There was somebody tells you that they were making out with Jesus today, and we took long romantic walks. We held hands and gazed into each other's eyes, and Jesus stroked my hair and told me that he adores the curvature of my neck, and he doesn't know what he'd do without me. And there are people that actually follow that teacher and listen to her. It's blasphemous. It's unscriptural. But, Kip, that's what Jesus told us it was going to be like in the end days. The part that confuses me is that very few people are heeding these warnings. Well, and I'm going to read this that goes right along with what you said. We read this at a Second Corinthians 11:4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. 
But though I be rude in speech, ye not in knowledge, but we have been through thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. I mean, this is what he's warning of right here, you know. Um, what gospel are these people teaching? You know, what Jesus comes down and does things like that? I mean, that's not the yeah. Jesus that I know of throughout the scriptures. Not That's not the Jesus I'm aware of. Amen. And I mean, it's it's striking. You know, and the best part about that verse, Kip, is that it really only has to apply to one thing. One thing. If there was a teacher who taught one thing that was contrary to the scripture and the truth of Jesus Christ, that's enough to mark them to walk away and do not give heed to them. But there are teachers out there, false teachers on YouTube, who have multiple, multiple, I would call them charges against them, who teach multiple doctrines contrary to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And they're given a pass. And then they're given money. And then they're given praises of men. As though these people actually communed with God or spoke for God being outside of the doctrine. This is troubling. This is alarming. And I find it fascinating that there are so few that, that heed the warnings in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, uh, 1 Peter, in all four of the Gospels, in Revelation, on and on and on, even all the way back to the Old Testament, just about every book, every book you can find a warning where either the prophet or God speaking, the Holy Spirit speaking through the prophet, Jesus himself or the disciple is telling you to be not deceived because deception has been going on since the beginning. Yep. Remember the Garden of Eden? <laughs> Same thing. Well, this is another thing. This is another valid point. These fallen angels, these spirits, these uh, demons, they are better at this than us. They are expertly skilled in their Amen. own soothsaying. People forget that. Do you think that these spirits are just idly sitting by like they're some kind of idiots? They are not. They are masters of human psychology. They have been around for almost 6,000 years. They know all the ins and outs and the workings of men. That's their job is to deceive. That's what they do because they hate us. They hate man because we were created in the image of God the Father. And they hate it. So what yeah. do they do? Everything they can to turn us against God. And that is what is so deadly serious with this stuff. Right. It's not a game. We're not playing a game here. It's not about, well, they're a really nice person. I don't care. They can be the yeah. nicest person on earth. But by George, when it comes to twisting scripture making people uh, question their faith or lose their faith or stop reading their scripture or they throw their Bibles away, oh boy, the condemnation that's going to come down them on, by God is going to be just unbelievable. And that is what's so important. And that's why we have to teach what we do. Exactly. It's, not, it's not about, you know, making money or making myself look better or anything like that. It's because I care. And I love each and every one that is listening right now that will Amen. listen to the show later i love you so much that i want to warn you so you don't fall into these traps right amen uh, brilliantly said brilliantly said it, it is all about the love of people i benefit not i benefit nothing from this not monetarily i don't benefit uh, i don't get off because you as you most of you can see there's quite a few people that hate me <laughs> yeah I get a lot of hate, but I preach from Scripture, and when I answer somebody, it's usually with Scripture, uh, unless they're being a shill. Um, the saddest thing, and I just wanted to finish it up with Cat T, and I know we want to talk a little bit about informed Christians, but Cat T, the, the saddest thing, and Kip, you and I talked about it, but um, that I saw was the good that she could have done by coming on and making a, a video of repentance— um, was a tragedy, a total missed opportunity to come on, uh, to collapse into the arms of her brothers and sisters and repent in front of God, in front of the world, which would have been um, an incredible thing, which would have won souls to Christ. Now, 
just to echo that in the Bible, we know the story of Joseph and his brothers as the brothers came to Egypt and a couple of times. And when Joseph had to leave the room uh, crying because he was so emotional, but knowing uh, what his brothers did to him, um, they, they abandoned him. They sold him into slavery. And then it just abandoned him. Then they went home and lied to their dad. Uh, but even in the end, Joseph had the God-given gift to forgive his brothers. You know, a um, little bit different, same principle. When you have a chance to collapse into somebody, because I know she probably perceived that the world hated her. But if Kat was listening, I would tell her, no. Did we make fun of you? Yes, your doctrine was ridiculous. It was wrong. You know, you're, you're going against the very doctrine of Jesus Christ. Did you commit the unforgivable sin? No. Come back on and please do a video of repentance to, to bring those who still follow you to the truth of Christ. What an opportunity that she missed there in, uh, in, in repenting. And I just wanted to clear that up because I don't hate Kat. No, you know? neither do I. I, just, I mean, I spoke I don't. with her. You know, I just told her, I said, it's going to be a sad day when this happens and you're going to be proved to be a liar. I said, you need to repent. And all she could do is say, you're just being a troll. Yeah. So I'm like, right. I warned you. That's all I can say. You know, that's all I could do. So when you look at a lot of teachers like that, like I know everybody knows that I have, I've got it, um, you know, as far as being in opposition to Clara from the Still Small Voice, I, I look at her as somebody that, until she repents, she's a reprobate because she preaches such a wild, uh, satanic doctrine, which actually shows her followers how to commit divination. Um, but I have to look at that. And so when I make my videos, as far as for me, I can only speak for me, but when I make my videos, it's to hopefully show her followers that uh, people like her are not to be feared. She is not in the body of Christ. I am she not no divided. Authority. No authority at all. It's, it's in fact, it's a satanic, it's a satanic uh, doctrine. So I don't mock anybody within the body of Christ, but I do mock a Satanist who sings songs by witches, practices divination, and teaches her followers to chant the divine, the uh, divine mercy chaplet, which is a Catholic prayer, which praises Mary and prays to dead people. So. There's a reason I do what I do. I know most people don't understand it, but like you, Kip, I'm going to stand up for the truth. I'm going to be a voice of opposition, and I'm going to protect the uh, truth of Jesus Christ, as I know you do. Okay, I'm going to do a screen share here. Um, well, we're, we're still in 2 Corinthians, and I'm going to go start off here at verse, this is uh, chapter 11, verse 13. This verse is so important. I'm going to highlight it here. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. There it is. These Amen. people will claim that they're working with Jesus, that they're of God. This is where it gets so concerning because people don't test the spirits. Because it says right here in verse 14, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, this would be the demons and the fallen angels, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Drew, what was Cat T's final works? She was proven to be wrong. Yes. So did that not just pretty much fulfill the warning right there in verse 15? Yeah. yeah. And I think um, when you get down to everything, by the way, great scripture share, fantastic. Um, one of many warnings. Uh, but when you get down to it, here's the bottom line. The true body of Christ has got to start holding these teachers accountable. You've got to stand in the truth of Christ, everybody. You just have to. There are souls that depend on you to be strong and bold for Christ and stand up and be fearless when standing in the truth of Christ and not being afraid to tell somebody you are wrong. And here's why. 
Let me show you this scripture. And when somebody is proven wrong by the word of Jesus Christ, or you know what I mean, by the word of God, then it should be a no-brainer for you. You need to mark that person and walk away. And if we all did that, the body of Christ would be perfect. Because oh, ever be. Can you right? imagine, Drew? Can you imagine? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And it it just would. The reason that people like Oh, Mike, man of God, are allowed to continue this folly on their channel is because these 12, 13, however many thousands of people this guy has following him do not hold him accountable. He's allowed to daily lie, to falsely prophesy the rapture, and to call down death upon somebody. And people think that this guy is speaking for God? It's folly. My goodness. Why? Oh, I can't say that. I'm going to try to stop myself from saying that. But <laughs> wow. Let me just say wow. <laughs> well, I mean, do people understand that God does not lie? So if a person tells you, God told me this and this is going to happen and it doesn't happen, then God's not talking to that person. Jesus is not talking to that person because right. they can't lie. They won't lie. Amen. So when someone does that, that means you need to mark that person. It doesn't mean you have to hate them. It doesn't mean you have to, you know, go in and swear at them or whatever. It just means mark them. Don't have anything more to do with them and pray for them. You know, yes. that that's the most powerful weapon we got is prayer to pray for these people. I mean, I will never tell someone, you know, oh, I hate that man. I just hate that man for what he does. No, I will never utter those words out of my mouth because then I'm no not. better than them. Right. But Amen. it's equally as damning of me to sit aside and not say anything. If I don't say anything, to me, that's actually kind of worse because then I'm just as guilty. I'm just right. sitting there watching this happen and I'm not saying anything. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And, you know, that's a, it's, a, it's a real difference because, you know, the Bible, the New Testament sets a couple of parameters on what it means to be a bishop, uh, what it means to be a teacher. You've got to not be a novice, it says very clearly. You've got to be qualified. But unfortunately, because we have this crazy platform of, you know, like YouTube, um, everybody can just jump on and, and uh, pretend to be a teacher. Now, if everybody was thinking clearly, and I know that because we live in the end times that that's not always an option, it seems, but if everybody was thinking clearly and they were sound mind, sound scripture, it's very easy to check these people uh, by comparing what they say to the word. Uh, but unfortunately, um, there's very, very many people that aren't doing it. The followers, you know, here's the thing, once they also find out that their teacher is false, and they continue to follow this false teacher and promote them, then they're in a position, I feel, where they're as, as guilty as the teacher. For they're willingly participating in folly like this, false doctrines. So that's something that's, you know, I don't condemn followers. I try to plead like you do, Kip. I, I plead with them to please get a sound mind. I know you really, 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 really like your teacher, but you should really, 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 really love your God. That's far more important than some Amen. dingling who's meditating with Jesus and slow dancing with him according to their self. That's just the point I want to get across. I, I really pray for the, the followers. I wish so bad that they would make that decision to, to get sound in mind and to read sound scripture and, uh, you know, Sorry for babbling. <laughs> no, I mean, it's valid. And, you know, this is why this episode is titled this, because we read in 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Now, wait a minute. What did that just say? Believe not every spirit, not believe some. It says, believe right. not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, Drew, would you kindly explain... How can a person tell if a spirit is of God? Well, this can get really complicated, Kip. I know, so if everybody has a piece of paper out there and a pen, um, it's, it's kind of a complicated process. But write this down. 
Read your Bible. Whew. That's that was that was. Really Heard everybody hard. hit the hit the showers, uh, get a fresh set of clothes. I know we just had a workout there, and uh, it's very complicated. But you know, of course, we joke about it. But we almost really need to because there there is a lot of people. Sometimes when you whisper or say the simplest things, it it can be wow. You know, I I I, I'm, I can't believe I never thought of that. But yes, it is. It truly is. Now, a lot of people will not read their Bible uh, because they they find it taxing. You know, Kip, what would I rather do? I mean, I think the way most people think is, what what would I rather do after a hard, long day at work? Get on and razzle-dazzle some communications on a, on the web or or sit back and, and grab the Bible and read the Word. And fortunately, you know, when we get back to Satan masquerade, masquerading as an angel of light, it's... People want to go where the fantastic is, you know, live action on the internet, um, and um, not not here. This is a good channel, by the way. This is a good place for people to come and razzle dazzle. But I'm talking about other channels where they're promising visitations from Jesus and all that stuff, um, rather than reading your Bible. But I assure you, one thing that I want to testify is that you made a commitment. Anybody who can hear my voice makes a commitment to start reading their Bible every day faithfully, you will find, you'll, you're going to kick yourself because there's not a better thing that you can do in your life to spiritually feed your soul. I mean, reading and praying all together, but reading that scripture. There's times, you know, Kip, even after reading the scripture for 35 years, that the Bible still causes me to weep. Yeah. I, I still can't read the, the story of Joseph and his brothers without crying absolutely crying. It is beautiful. And when God reveals something to you in the New Testament that, oh my, where did that come from? I've read the Bible a million times and I, I don't, it's because it's, God blows your mind. It is absolutely amazing. So that's my encouragement. But yeah, to answer your question, Kip, the, the way that you can know and test the spirits is by being sound in scripture, sound in doctrine, and you will know immediately um, the, the, the top three, Kip, what would you say? I, I met Jesus would probably be number one, right? Yep. Um, I've spoken to angels. Angels visit me. Yep. Or the best one, the funniest one, I think, is... Go ahead. Say it. I'm trying to think which one we're talking about. I went to heaven! Oh, yes, the trips to heaven. I went to heaven. Sisters and brothers, gather around. I went to heaven. We had pizza made of light. <laughs> you may want to explain that to people where that came from. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> um, if anybody tells you that they went to heaven, they're lying. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain. Don't let me forget about the, the pizza made of light, but... There was three people in Scripture, Kip, you and I know, that went, that saw heaven, that had a glimpse into heaven or went to heaven, right? Yep. You had Stephen, who at the time of his stoning looked up, in, looked, looked up into heaven uh, and saw Jesus. And then we have Paul. And then you have, well, I'm going to go to John next because there's a reason I'm going to leave Paul last. But okay. you go to John the Revelator. John very specifically handpicked by Jesus to be the author or narrator of the most mind-blowing book in the Bible, which is incredible and wonderful, the book of Revelation. And then you have Paul, who referred to himself when telling his story, referred to himself in the third person because he didn't want pride to get in the way of telling his testimony, of, but also testified that he saw things, he heard words that were inexpressible and saw things uh, that he was forbidden to tell about. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but where Paul felt it, Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, New Testament, could not dare tell you what he saw. And when you hear him speak, you can hear fear, you can hear awe, amazement, indescribable holiness that he wouldn't dare. But now you get creatures like Susan Waldrop, who tells her testimony of going to heaven and playing darts. 
and shooting billiards. Wow, that sounds incredible. We don't have that down here on Earth. No. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, you actually do. You got it on every bar in, on every corner in the United States. So, But that was her testimony. Now, my question posed is, why would the Apostle Paul, who did fantastic miracles, who did astonishing acts, who spoke incredible truth, why would he not be able to tell you what heaven was like, but Susan Waldrop can, and Claire Dubois, they can both tell you what goes on in heaven. That's amazing. Oh, and here we go. Kat Kerr, who God told her to dye her hair pink because he wanted her to stand out. And he wanted the people to know that God sent her. That, you know, of course, the, the word in the Bible wasn't good enough to let people know that God sent her. It was the pink hair. But Kat testifies that when she went to heaven, one of many times, by the way, that she ate pizza made of light. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to get me some of that. Dude, I I'd like to place an order, Mr. Angel. Can you bring <laughs> me a pizza with a light pizza with some light anchovies and some light pepperonis and light green peppers <laughs> and bring it to me at the speed of light? <laughs> I mean, all you can really do is laugh at stuff like this because it's, it's so ridiculous. ludicrous. It is. It is. And this actually brings me to another point, you know, where we were talking about angels masquerading, these demons masquerading as angels. And what people don't understand as we read this in Galatians 1.8, it's very specific. It says, well, let me screen share it here. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. That's a pretty heavy-duty word when you think about that. Accursed? Yeah. Uh, right. So if we have a person that is talking to an angel or has said that they're getting their information from an angel and they're teaching that, the scripture says... They're accursed. Stay away from them. Don't have anything to do with those people because they're right. cursed. And people may all say, well, I don't like that. I don't, that's not comfortable. It doesn't sound very humble. Well, that's just too bad. That's what the scripture says. We have to stand firm on the word of God. That is our sword. And I don't want a dull, blunt, dinged up sword. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry, I was trying to get something here, but that's right. Yeah, it, and it and here's the thing. Hey, Ryan, can you shut the door? Sorry about that. I'm trying to do stuff while I'm on here, but you're you're absolutely right. The to to do things like this, where there's not just warnings, but Paul says, "Let them be accursed." And again, it goes to the seriousness of the crime. It is a crime. In the Old Testament, it was punishable by death. But in the New Testament, with, you know, uh, grace of Jesus Christ coming forth, um, even Paul says, um, you're to be accursed. I'm just going to read this here out loud. This is what it means to be accursed. It means under a curse or used to express strong dislike or an anger towards someone or something hateful, detestable, loathsome, foul, abominable, damnable, Odious, obnoxious, despicable, horrid, horrid, ghastly, awful, dreadful, terrible. Uh, yeah, that's pretty serious. And, and let, me, let me add a little bit to that, my brother Kip. When the followers who follow a teacher, you know, and this is why we do it. Look, you're going you're gonna to do whatever it is you want, follower. But when you do that, knowing that they've done something like falsely prophesying, what do you think that makes you? Because there's a lot of people out there who are not dumb, but they get into what I call church comfort, church playing church. Now, in the old days, a long time ago, people loved to you know go to church for the social aspect of it. But here, we do have an internet social aspect. I mean, after all, it's called social media, and there is a certain socialization of what happens on the internet. 
you know, it's not just that, for example, somebody goes to Claire to watch her daily videos, but that they also meet friends over there in the comments section. Hi, Sarah. How was your day? Did you hear what Claire said? So there's a social aspect to it that people, they don't want to pull away from, even at the expense of knowing that their false teacher is a false teacher. So they will cling on to that and not give heed to the true doctrine of Jesus Christ. I mean, we just had a person in the chat room just accuse us now, saying that we're not being loving. Right. You know, it's, it's comments like that that break my heart because it's like, why do you think we're doing what we're doing? Why is it you think we're teaching what we're teaching straight from the scripture? You don't think we're loving? I'll tell you what loving is, pal! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, of no. course, you're right. You're right, but it, I mean, it really is. Uh, I'll tell you what, don't mistake, you know, being stern, um, being sharp, as we're told in the Bible, to sharply rebuke them, right? Yep. Don't mistake that, as you say, for hate. It's not hate. Sometimes if somebody, if I come up to you, Kip, if you're doing something crazy and I grab you by the shoulders and say, snap out of it, man, what is going on with you? Come on. This dude just falsely prophesied, and you're still, you know, hanging out there. Yep. Sometimes that's what it—that's what it takes. I mean, why do you think mom and dad yelled at you, right? I mean, your aunt and uncle, your grandma and grandpa, or your boss. Sometimes it doesn't always. You know, in our case, it doesn't ever mean that we hate you. No, but it just means that look, we're well versed in in uh, in scripture. We've been through this. Your reverence for this false teacher is mistaken. Now, I'm going to yell at this false teacher because they deserve to be yelled at because they're preaching a false doctrine provable by the very words of Jesus Christ. Don't mistake it for hatred, but you are to be sharply rebuked until you repent. You have not committed the unforgivable sin. You are welcome back to the family of Jesus Christ when you repent. And exactly. we will still continue. Right. We will still continue to heavily pray for you but you've got to stop preaching a false doctrine and until you, know, you and, do and, and that's one of the most important well, go ahead and finish what you're saying no i was going to say until you do there, there's got to be a separation as the bible tells us we are to mark them and avoid them yeah i mean what i've always thought and you you said this earlier you know about cat t you know how powerful would that have been if she'd have truly repented and said folks i am so sorry i should never have done this that would have been tremendous i mean any of these people that do these false teachings and that if they were to just change and and turn around what a awesome awesome testimony that would be and that's right? what we're trying to do by doing this show like we're doing now, you know, we're not sitting here being accusers. We're using the word as we're taught to use it, to correct, for reproof. That's what it's here for. God Amen. loves us so much that he gave us an instruction manual. We don't, we don't deal in dreams and these things anymore. We have the written book. We can hold it with our hands. Whenever Amen. we have a question, whenever we have a spiritual issue or a problem, we open that book and God speaks to us directly. It's right there. Amen. It doesn't get it, any better than that. It's beautiful, man. Uh, scripture is so beautiful. It really is. And I would also say as, as a, a continuance on that, if, I, if everybody listening, if, have, have you ever, what I almost quote unquote, has anybody ever collapsed sobbing in repentance, whether it be praying to God, whether it be, you know, confiding in a friend? But there's an emotional aspect that's missing uh, from a lot of Christians or believers who seem to pass over that part. Now, I collapse just about every night. It's very taxing what I do. I take a lot of heat um, and I cry out to the Lord all the time. Um and I'm certainly not ever saying that I'm perfect, but one thing that I do is abide in the doctrine and, and try to go forward from there. But, you know, what, what you say, what we, we've talked about, what Cat T could have done 
is such an emotional overhaul. She could have won. Because something like that would go viral, right? Oh, yeah. It would have went viral. And it would have been beautiful. And it would have been an incredible, if it was honest, you know what I mean? An incredible testimony to the power of God, saving another wretch like us um, after doing something that was clearly, clearly wrong. It, but she chose rather not to give the glory to God and to just shut, shut down the channel, whatever, and take her videos down and go silent. And this only confirms what, that what she did was wrong. Not that you know you and I needed a confirmation that falsely prophesied, but it, it just furthers uh, the evidence of what she did and, and how wrong it was. You know. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, that's what I want in the worst way. You know, for people, as I I really would love to have. You know, there's a lot of people that I don't communicate with anymore. It doesn't mean I hate them. I just have to do what the scripture says. I have to leave them be. And then, you know, all I can do is pray and just hope to God that they'll turn around and come back. And I have had that happen a couple times. I've had a couple of friends that have turned around and now we're, we're, we're friends again. And it's great. It's the best feeling in the world. Amen. And how, how did that happen? Because I, I, I told them, I can't do this anymore, man. You're, you're doing stuff against the Bible. You're, you're going directly against what Jesus taught. And I can't be friends with you anymore. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. You're not helping anybody by saying, well, I'm going to stick with them. I'm going to stick with them because maybe, you know, that will help. No, you're not helping them. You're making it worse for them because, you know, take it from, you know, a recovered alcoholic. The worst thing anyone can ever do is to, you know, just let you sit in that. And, and yeah. You know, I had people that would bring me alcohol. Were those my friends? Were those people my friends? Right, right. You know, they would bring me bottles of liquor. Those were not my friends at all. Yeah. They did not care for me at all. Right, right. Yep. So put it, you know, that, let's put it that way. You yeah. know, if those were my friends and someone came into that situation and said, shame on you for bringing Kip liquor. How could you do such a thing? Would you go to that person and say, well, that's not being said in a very loving way. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let him have his liquor. Come on, people. It's all about love here. Right. I mean, that's, there, it's no different. It is no different Absolutely. with these other teachings. Yeah. Souls are on the line. We know how, we talked about how serious it is, everything like this. But I really don't, because I know we, we've also talked about consciences being seared. Because I, I don't think that a person like Claire um, Dubois from a still small, I don't think she even can comprehend how serious the crimes are that she committed. Oh, man. Um, she has just no idea. And the, the blasphemous things that she said, and, and there's many other teachers. I know there are a lot of people that are asking about uh, a channel called Informed Christians. Now, I've seen a couple of videos uh, from this guy. And I know he uses, uh, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've, I thought I've seen him use numerology, uh, the stars. He's predicted the rapture a couple of times. And he's, uh, you know, he seems like a, you know, very uh, well, down to earth talking guy. You know, he talks like this and he seems very trustworthy, like what he's saying is true. And he goes up and down. Seems like, you know, he knows what he's talking about, but he doesn't. He doesn't. He uses scripture as a footnote to his agenda. And I wanted to make sure that I put that name out there because I know he's false. Um, I know he's making a ton of money, uh, but he's if, you, if you're subscribed to this guy, I want you to know that you subscribed and follow a guy who has falsely prophesied. So let that be now on you. You know now. So if you continue to keep following, um, you're going to have a lot to answer for. You know what I mean? It, um, it's not something to – this isn't entertainment. Listen, well, let's see who gets the closest. Or, gee yeah, whiz, exactly. he, was, he was really close on that one. Good job. We'll get him next time. But, yeah, this guy is, uh, um, definitely needs to be called out for being a false prophet. Because, but he keeps going on and on. There's, there's people that are sending this guy. Um, there was one guy who put a comment on that. I just cashed my Social Security check. And I'm you know, sending you a portion of that. And, oh, wow. and the guy was like, okay, thanks. People on Social Security sending these YouTube profits their money. It's it's 
what a racket, man, right? You know, it's like, wow. Well, and then getting back to the aspect of fallen angels and demons and what they do, um, people need to realize these entities do not sleep like we do. They do not have any need for rest. They are continually working day and night. These creatures are at work, very hard at work. They operate like a very, probably one of the most largest armies you can imagine. And they are, are around everywhere. And when these people say that they're meeting Jesus or they're talking to an angel, they are. They are talking to creatures. They are talking to these entities, but they are I not Jesus. It. They right. are not godly angels. You yeah. know, what, what do God's angels do? If we read through the scriptures, when angels are usually mentioned, they're messengers. They bring messages. Um, like when Abraham, you know, they came and talked to Abraham, and they were there when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. They came down to when Gabriel came to talk to Daniel and brought the prophecy to him. You know, the important stuff, stuff that was very, very, very important. Right, right. Angels did not come down here to, to talk foolishness. You know, that's right. not what they, they're, they are dispatched by God himself. Angels don't just say, hmm, I'm going to go down and talk to Drew tonight. I am going to bring down a bowl of popcorn and we're just going to talk for a little bit. No, they don't do that. Right. But now the fallen angels will do things like that. The demons will do that. They will come and pretend to be loved ones. They will pretend whatever your weakness may be, they know what it is. Yeah. They will pretend to be Jesus, a look-alike, because we know Jesus is not how he's portrayed as we think of him, with the long hair and the beard and right. the white skin and all that. You know, we know what Jesus looks like because it's described in Revelation, very clear, face like the sun. He, you know, he doesn't have a race. He's not, he is in heaven. He's holy. He is in his transformed body. Right. People yep. don't seem to grasp that. So when someone's telling you, oh, yeah, Jesus came down and we talked. And, you know, it was, he was so beautiful. He was so beautiful. Well, I'm sorry, but if you're doing the long-haired, bearded Jesus, then that's not the Jesus of the scriptures that, I'm, that I know. Right. Because Jesus no, but, does not come down and talk one-on-one -on -one with people. That's not how it works. Right. And if he did, then he he's just killing his own word, as spoken in Matthew twenty four twenty three. So exactly, and, and we know that he's not doing that. So, but yeah, to, to um, echo what you're saying, um, I have no doubt the demon kingdom is um, fallen angels, demons. Uh, they are well organized. Their main goal is to get you to hell, and they they especially the ones. I look at it as if if you ever look at a steer clear um, lake. You ever like rise up in the morning and you're by a lake and the, and the water is just still. There are certain Christians as they that are going to grow stronger in Christ. They're going to be looked at as a, a greater threat. And those are the ones who are targeted first. So if you start to grow strong, Kip, in Christ and um, you're, you're pleasing Christ, you, you're being obedient. In, you know, because we all have our ups and downs, but... You start to, you know, you give up more and more for Christ, and your life becomes less in this world and more in Christ, right? And I kind of always thought of it as that's like when a when a Christian starts to rise out of a lake, not because Christians rise out of a lake, and this might sound weird, but as you break the surface of a certain level, that's when all of a sudden this demon world will target you hard, because now you've just become more powerful in Christ and they're going to do everything they can to shut you up. You know, so that's kind of the way. But but in any other case, if you have come to Christ, you know, you know, Jesus talks about the parable of the seeds, you will be attacked by demons and they're going to either choke the word out of you, uh, they're going to use their friends to come and tempt you. Uh, they'll bring the cares of the world. People can't handle it. So most people will fall right back away. Um, and that's their job. But for the Christian that does stays, uh, I'm sorry, that does stay, um, you're going to see that person grow in Christ. And that's the real threat to the uh, the uh, kingdom of Satan also, because that's the person that's going to spread a lot of the gospel. 
So yeah, because what once again, what is the goal of these fallen angels, of these unclean spirits? Their goal is to do everything they can to get you turned away from the real Jesus and away from the scriptures. They don't want you reading the Bible. They right. That's the last thing they want you to do because then they'd get found out because you know they can't. Um, they can only go so far, and you have to allow them to do such a thing, and that's what. A lot of these these dream weavers and these false prophets and these false teachers do. I was dealing with the spirit of Michael, and Michael told me this. No, no, he didn't. Because right. if you read the scripture, you will know Michael is the head prince angel. He's got a lot of stuff on his plate to deal with in the spiritual realm. He does not come down here and tinker around with us people. I mean, he is the guardian of mankind, as it says in the scripture. He's not coming yep. down here one-on-one -on -one and talking to somebody in an alleyway. Not going to happen. I'm sorry. That I was just going to say, how dare you come against Jonathan Kleck like that? <laughs> I, I, you know what? You're going to hell. How dare you? You just blasphemed the Holy Spirit, pal. Yep, I'm done for. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because... I uh, I got uh, I, I I don't know how I saw it one day, but there was uh, Jonathan Clark had gone to three different. I think it was Neftali. It was oh darn it, I can't remember the other two. But in each one, he goes around, and if somebody does a video about him, he will go to the comments section and tell them that you've just committed the unforgivable sin, and you're going to hell. And then he'll say something like, "Sorry," you know. It's just like. You just laugh. It's the, the arrogance and the audacity of pomp. The pomp, the pompousness of somebody like that is incredible. You know? Yeah, I mean, exactly. And once again, if people were seasoned in the word, they would know that that can't be possible. That that's not how it operates. It's not what goes on. It, it's, it's, it's a mockery. It's a total mockery of biblical truth. And another yeah. thing people don't realize is... Evil spirits have to tell you what they are, but they'll do it in a, in a, sometimes they'll do it right in front of your face. Um, a good example, I'm sure people know who Chris Angel is, the famous magician. Oh, yeah. If you look at his logo, it says, believe with the words L-I-E highlighted in red. There it is, right in front of your face, yep. because they have to tell that. the truth. They have to admit what they are. You will see that in various things. So when someone labels something, something, Whatever that word may be, and especially if it's related to something wicked, believe it. That's what they're endorsing. That's what they're showing you. When someone says, I am inhabited by a fallen angel, believe them, because they are. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point, Kip. I had never thought, I mean, I've always seen that video clip of Clark saying that, but mm -hmm. I never thought about it until you just said it like that. Yeah, great yeah, point. I believe him 100%. I do not doubt it. Yeah, you know, I hate even giving that guy any talk time because he's such a fruit. There are some doctrines on some of these. You know, the the most hysterical thing, there are, there are people that think Kleck is off the scales brilliant. They That he just blows their mind every day because he can take a picture and turn it upside down and tell everybody that it's a vagina. And they just they're just blown away. Or, you know, show a car commercial and play it backwards and turn it to the side and it's, you know, another woman's private parts and it's all the Vatican. And it's mind-blowing. There are people that actually revere this guy as having anything that resembles godly intelligence. Well, what's interesting is why, do, why all the sexual hang-ups with a lot of these teachings? It's not just Gluck. It's a lot of others. I mean, why the obsession with these sexual themes? I mean, that's what concerns me the most, and I see a lot of it going on out there. I mean, one of the absolute worst heretical teachings I ever, ever, ever have heard in my life was that in the Old Testament, the word anointing with oil meant to anoint with semen. And oh, people, I, I... You've heard that one? No, I have not heard that oh, one. Oh, you haven't? Sorry. Yeah, that, that was one not. of the absolute worst ones I'd ever heard taught. Oh, my goodness. I have to, wow, I gotta stop saying that. Um, no, I haven't heard, but it that's so funny that I can say in one sentence, number one, I haven't heard that, but number two, it doesn't surprise me, right? 
And that's the beauty of what demons who masquerade as angels, that's how they will infiltrate the body of Christ and just start giving these little Gnostic and uh, nudges and just kind of veer you off of the path and get you onto some of these other beliefs. And once in a while, they'll, tr they'll twist scripture to make that little lie fit into uh, the rest of the truth of Christ. And that's, that in itself is dangerous because we know that even one drop of poison will poison the whole glass, right? Yep. We know this. It's incredible. But would you drink a glass of water if I just put one drop of poison in it? I was going to use that analogy. I'm like, you know, if I came and brought you a nice, delicious glass of iced tea every day, and after about two weeks of time period, I came to you and I said, tomorrow you're going to die. And that person would be like, what? Well, every day I gave you that delicious glass of iced tea, I was putting a drop of cyanide in it, and now it's built up in your system, so tomorrow you're going to die. That's the way these fallen angels and demons work. It's that little percent. It's not... They're not going to come jumping in your bedroom with wings and a pitchfork and dance their goat hooves on your bed going, ha, 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 that's not how right. they work. <laughs> right. I mean, we do see that in instances of unsaved people with hauntings or demonic possession, you know, sometimes because they work on fear. Right. Um, when it comes to the believers, the, the demons and fallen angels know that's not going to work with most believers. If I saw a winged entity come down here in my basement, it would be pretty obvious. But now, if I had, you know, a beautiful Nordic-looking blonde-haired creature come in here and start telling me these wondrous truths, I would be way more suspicious, being like, huh, hmm, who are you, and what are you teaching here? Right. As the Bible says, you know, these angels will be down here doing this stuff. They're going to be teaching lies. And I think another thing people seem to not grasp is, what are doctrines of demons, doctrines of devils? Well, a lot of it is the Gnostic texts. Yeah. That stuff has been going on since the days of Noah. Right. Those are the secrets of heaven. Those are the forbidden things. Now, all of a sudden, people think it's like open game on these books. Like, oh, it's all truth. It's all good. And we can slap it in with the Bible because men hid this stuff. They hid it. No, the men that hid these books hid them because they knew they were trash and knew that they were bad. They were put away. Now they're out again and they're on the market. Yeah. And again, it goes to the mindset of the times that we live in. Everybody wants a fantastic experience. Everybody wants the tingles in their toes. They want a new doctrine. Um, and they don't want to work for it. They don't want to study. And so that's what you're seeing. Fantastic tales, uh, which also these doctrines of devils, these Gnostic teachings, bring in. And unfortunately, Kip, it also leads to actual uh, Satanism. Because yes. people, yeah, it really does. And because people get fascinated with the occult, with magic, with um, spell casting. The scariest thing you'll ever see is do a, I hate even saying this, but there are teenagers who are teaching other teenagers how to cast spells on the internet. Oh, yeah. It is beyond trouble. There's not a word for troubling. Well, I'll give an mind. example. When I first got saved, I got into the Hebrew Roots movement very deeply, and I started to get into Kabbalah. And I was reading a lot of stuff online. I was reading a lot of these, you know, Nag Hammondi books and stuff. And I was like, wow, maybe there really is Christian magic. I was really deep into it. I thought that there was real white Christian magic and that this was a hidden thing that had been kept from us by the church or by the Roman church or whatever. And I was into that stuff for almost a year. And I realized how deceived I was, and that's when I put my foot down. I was like, these books are bad news. They are very bad. And, you know, yes, I do mention a lot of Gnostic texts and stuff in some of my decoding videos, but I'm not endorsing them. I'm showing people how dangerous this stuff is, how it relates to the warnings in the Scripture to stay the hell away from these things because that's where they're leading it to is hell. 
That's no yeah. joke. These books are meant to mesmerize you. They're meant to draw you in. They're meant to be like a Harry Potter book. Oh, man, this stuff's so good. It's so exciting. You know, and we see teachers doing this all over YouTube, you know, doing this. They're writing books. They're making documentaries. They're on talk shows, and they, they think they're masters of the universe. And they're like, well, there's nothing wrong with being a Gnostic. It just means knowledge. Well, guess right. what? <laughs> That knowledge comes with a price. And what you're choosing to do with that knowledge, especially if you're using it to deceive other people and young Christians, come judgment day, yeah. you're not going to like what's going to happen. And that's why we're warning about yeah. it. Absolutely. I'm, I, I can speak for this in authority because I fell into it. I was involved in these things. I have all those books. I've read most of them. So for people to tell me that, oh, well, you don't read them. Oh, yes, I have. And I was deceived by them. Why I'm, this is why I warn people about them. I don't want yeah. to see people go through what I went through. The confusion, the doubting of the faith, wondering, is the Bible actually real? I mean, I actually went through that period where I was like, man, I'm wondering if the Bible's not full of flaws and these other books are right. I was getting that close. Exactly. And then that's the danger zone. And your your spirit moved, didn't it? Yes, it did. I got convicted, yeah. and I was like, "Man, I am heading down a bad path here." Very, I was do, I was right on the edge, right on the edge. Yeah, you know, I essentially was becoming a modern day Pharisee. I was wearing all the stuff. I was doing all the Jewish rituals, all that stuff. You know, that was what I was into. Wow, it was all wrong. Yep. That's a great testimony, by the way, um, especially being firsthand. You didn't just read about it. You actually experienced it. Uh, that and that's why I care. That's why I get so upset when people say, oh, well, you're just jealous or you're you're accusing and we, the devil's the accuser. And, you know, I get that stuff all the time. And I'm just like, if only you people could feel what I felt and know what I went through when I was studying that myself. I am concerned out of love, and I'm concerned because I don't want to see people get, you know, go through condemnation for these things. And I don't want to, certainly don't want to see anybody end up in hell over this stuff. you got to right. be careful, so careful with what you read and put into your mind. And what you listen to, which, you know, can also get you into uh, what's happening, when in, in, in not what's happening, but what has been happening since the birth of rock and roll. And, um, you know, I have, I am very knowledgeable in rock and roll. I grew up, uh, born in the sixties, grew up in the seventies and the eighties, uh, rock and roll. Oh boy. I loved it. Uh, but I also, because of my Christian, um, walk, I've studied a great deal on the occult and, you know, the Beatles, uh, the British invasion all the way through the seventies and the eighties, right up until, you know, Another movement of Satan is the grunge movement in the early 90s. Um, powerful, powerful stuff. And I am convinced without a shadow of a doubt that you cannot make it in the music industry or in the film industry, at least at getting it to a certain level, without completely selling your soul to Satan. There is no doubt in my mind. He owns that industry, and you will be told what to sing, and you'll be told when to sing it. And yeah, you might enjoy some yachts and women and sex and drugs and all that stuff. But in the end, is it worth it? No, you will lose your soul. Lose your soul for that, what you did. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, it's just, you know, people need to realize where, where does the devil send his minions out to work? Does he go and send them out to the unbelievers? They're already lost. Why continue on with them? We're dealing with them right in front of us every single day. They're masquerading as Christians. They're masquerading as believers. You want to talk about um, they live? We deal with them continually. They pretend to be Christians. They call themselves men of God. And they're right. seeding their lies in there. They're seeding Gnostic garbage into the word of God, into the truth of Christ. And people are lapping it up. Because it's interesting, or it's cool, or it's fantasy land. You know, oh, there was this magical world before Genesis. 
and people uh, get mad at me. Yeah, you know, they get mad at me. What does the scripture say? We've had several shows, you know, we've discussed that in detail, in depth with Daniel Johnson and others, you know, showing how it's not in the Bible. If it's not in the Bible, what the hell are you teaching it for? It right. isn't there. Quit yeah. trying to make something out of nothing. Quit twisting God's word. You know, people are, don't understand that it's going to get to a driving point where the wrath is going to start coming down. That's what Revelation is about. Jesus is not coming down here, floating on a cloud, going to be throwing flower petals all over the place. He's coming right. down here with a sword. He's coming down here to destroy the wicked. And what is Satan's job? It's to turn you all against God. That's his job. And he's going to do it slow. And he's going to do it subtly. And he's going to make you question your faith. And he's going to make you question God's word. That's his duty. And people Amen. don't like that I pre preach this way or don't like it, that I don't sound loving. Well, too bad. That's just too bad because I'm going to stick yeah. to what's written in this book on my desk. That's what I'm going to stick to because that's safe. That's pure truth. That is what the disciples died for. People have died to keep this book intact. They've died right. for it. They gave up Amen. their lives to preserve yeah. this word. To give it to us so that we can have this truth and this sword in our hand. And I'm sorry I'm getting a little emotional, but I just can't help it because oh, okay. it's so true. And it's, it's so truth. important. You know, the devil is continually at work to bring us down. To squish us into the ground and grind us into the dirt. And all we can do is sit there and say, well, you don't have a loving spirit. Well, what's coming out of me right now is my loving spirit that I care and I love each and every one of you. And I don't want to see anybody perish. And I don't want to see people deceived. Amen. People don't understand. There's people in hell right now that wish. They just wish that I could hear that one more time. Please, God, please. I'll, I'll, I'll do it better next time. I'll do it better. But God isn't hearing them. Because they've made their decision and it's final now. They're done. And that bothers me that people, this goes on every single day. And people Amen. just, they, all they got to do is sit here and say, well, you're not showing the spirit of love. You're not showing humility. And I'm sorry, but I can only no, preach brother. the truth. That's all I can do is, is ground myself in the scriptures and what Jesus said. And when he made these warnings, he wasn't joking. Amen. Absolutely true. I absolutely confirm everything that you say. And if anybody has a heart for God, uh, they can only listen to what you just said and, and feel it resonate within their spirit that, uh, that you're speaking truth, man. If people would just slow down for a minute and just get a grip on reality and read their scripture um, and seek God with all of your heart you know it is about the beginning of wisdom is the fear of god all the warnings are there and and all the love is there but stay grounded in the truth of jesus christ and and i know that's what you're saying um the warnings are there to please don't listen to these false teachers the very fact the scripture that says satan masquerades as an angel of light and we've said it many, many different different times in different ways that the way that he is going to do this is he's going to deceive the people through false doctrine. And my friends, what Kip said is absolutely true. That's the, the, the primary way that he's going to do this. So Kip, God bless you what you just said, brother. We all felt what you said and, and preach it, man. Just preach it because... Uh, it is truth, and God bless you for preaching the truth. Well, it's just, it, it's been building on me for, you know, the last month. You know, I've gone through a lot this last month, and it's just, it's been, it's been building and building and building, and it's difficult to do, you know, these types of things. It's difficult to stand true on the truth because most people don't want to hear you. They don't want to listen to it. And, you know, I, I made mention of this on, you know, your channel when I was commenting to this one lady that was talking about, well, you know, her feelings this and feelings that. And I said, we're in the scriptures that say that we're supposed to follow feelings. We're supposed to follow the truth. 
Right. And sometimes the truth cuts and it hurts. But eventually those cuts heal up and then you get stronger and you get stronger and you get stronger until you have got such a concrete foundation that no one and nothing can move you off of it. Right. Amen. And that's the way we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be continually studying. You know, I mean, I used to teach pre-edemic theory. I used to be into that stuff. I've moved above and beyond it because I stuck to the word and the word convicted me that, hey, you can't teach this anymore. You can't believe in it because God said, "Ha, uh no, read my word. It's right here. And that's what I did. And that's why I stand on God's truth, not men's truth. I don't care how many books people have written. I don't care how many talk shows you've been on. I don't care if you're a multi-billionaire. It does not matter. What matters is what God's word says. And God Amen. promised to preserve that word. So when I hear yep. people say, oh, well, men have done this to the Bible, and this is not true, and the New Testament is a lie, and Paul is a liar, where do you think that comes from? It comes yeah. from that little whispering spirit in your ear. And where does that spirit come from? It's an unclean spirit that wants to see you perish and not enter into heaven. The biggest thing that these fallen angels hate is the fact that they know we will be judging them. If you know right. someone is going to be judging you, what are you going to do? You're going to do everything you can to get that person completely off kilter and off task. Right. And that's what yeah. they're doing. That's their daily job. Okay. You know, I want to uh, take a minute to quote some scripture here from, from the book of John. In one of the loneliest scriptures, um, in the first chapter, um, if you go to uh, verse 10 and 11, I'm going to read it. It says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Now, this is our God of all glory. And it's, it's a sad, sad verse. And, and unfortunately, this is the pattern that remains. Because Jesus Christ is there right now for whoever wants him. But in order to come to Jesus Christ, you have to come to him in all truth, in all repentance. And you may have him. But the, sad, the saddest part of this uh, verse 11 was that his own received him not. So if you're out there listening... Um, my question would be to you, are you receiving Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ? This has got to be. You've got to receive him, and you've got to receive him in truth. And if you think that you're messing around, or you think that, yeah, you know, I do follow a couple of teachers who are a little bit dingy or a little bit off on their uh, doctrine, then that's a little warning inside you. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you and telling you to get right with Christ, to come to him in all truth, come to him and love him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You know, there's only so much guys like Kip and I can tell you, uh, but in the end, it's going to be your choice. But if you can, you know, if we can do something to help you make that decision, uh, we want to encourage you to please come to Jesus Christ in all truth so you're not one of those um, in the end, that find out that he was standing right next to you, calling to you, but you knew him not, and this was your choice. So it's a very solemn statement. I would just ask that you would consider it. Um, we're all sinners. We know this, and we're all wretched. We're unworthy of what God has offered to us, the free gift of salvation. But my goodness, it, it's, it's our duty. Wouldn't you say, Kip? Oh, it's just, you know, you're so right in that. And, you know, that's another thing to get to is people are trying to make it, you know, sound like, you know, we pick on people or we're trying to make ourselves, you know, holier than thou. I most certainly am not holier than any other person. I will never say that. I will never act that way. As Jude just said, as the scripture says, we're all as filthy rags. We are saved by grace so that no one can boast. No one is going to be saying, well, look at all the stuff I did. You know, I'm going, to get, I'm going to do this and that, and, you know, I'm better than you. No, no, that's not how it works. Jesus did what he did because he loved us so much. And he did it perfectly so that we can all come to him as wretched piles of rags to be saved. The law of the scriptures shows how imperfect we are. 
there is not one human being alive on this world that can follow the law to the letter. Not possible. It'll never happen. Try as you may and it will kill you. Because the scripture says that. You try to you try to practice the law in full, it'll kill you. It'll flat out kill you. And it killed Jesus because he was the only one that was able to do it and fulfill it. And that's why we have the scriptures. We Amen. sit and read to the laws. And every time you read a law, have I lied? Yes. Have I committed adultery? Yes. Have I stolen from someone? Yes. And what that is all about, what it's all about is showing your need for a savior. And all Jesus is saying is, grab my hand and come with me. Have faith and believe in me. And there you go. That, that, that's how it works. It's not difficult. Satan wants you to think it is. That's his goal, you know, that he sends his minions out there, make it so unbelievably complicated you can't figure it out. That's why we have Pentecostals, Lutherans, Baptists, Catholics. You know, I could go on and on and on. That's why we have all these religions. People blame these religions, you know, like, oh, you know, this and that. And, you know, religion's wrong, Christianity's wrong. Well, they're, they are right. It is all wrong. They've taken a simple doctrine of following the scriptures, following Christ's words, his completed works, and having faith and trust on him, and they've turned it into a business. They've turned it into stuff that pollutes the minds of billions of people. Amen. It makes them yeah. want to work for their salvation when you can't work for nothing because you're not perfect. That's why Jesus said what he said. Be ye, be ye therefore perfect as God in heaven is perfect. He said that for a reason, because you can't be perfect. I can't be perfect. Drew can't be perfect. None of us can be. We're all in need of Christ. We're all in need of a Savior. We're all grafted in when we profess his name. And that's why we see all these things going on, seeding in these lies and, you know, all these ridiculous teachings and dreams and false rapture prophecies it's all built to make you fall and fall hard that's what it's yeah. all about absolutely why do you think uh jesus said that it was a path exactly if the truth didn't matter why would jesus say that it's a path well it's very well illustrated that the reason it's a path is because very few people want the actual truth they want sensationalism. They want to get their feelings, their ears tickled. That's like you said previously. It's all about feelings. It's all about love. Well, I got news. Jehovah's Witnesses love each other. Yes, they, they think do. they love the truth. Mormons, they have love. Even Islam has love. If it was just about love, well, what would be the whole point of the Bible being that thick? You'd just be one page. Everybody love each other and love God, and that would be it. But it's not. There are warnings, there are commandments, um, there is behavior, there's so much, there's wisdom, there's advice, there's everything that God has left us uh, in order to study, to grow closer to him, and to get fed with the truth of Jesus Christ. It's more than love. Now, once you have the truth and you have the love of God, you're pretty much good to go. You're good to go. And then what you do then is you just seek to do the will of God and, and what he has prepared for your life. And this is a wonderful thing. But it's like we go back to that one drop of poison in that glass of water. All it takes is one. Yep. You know, you know uh, that I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was that uh, band Casting Crowns that did a song called Slow Fade. You know, and getting into how fallen angels and demons masquerade as beings of light, it is a slow fade. They probably know in many cases that they're not going to get you in one day. No. They're going to start working on you and working on you every day a little bit more. And then all of a sudden you'll be cruising to work and you'll hear that song on the radio that takes you back to your high school. And, oh, my goodness, wasn't that a good time? And I should call that girl and see what she's up to. And then... You know, of course, I'm just giving you an example, but with the power of the Internet, it's very real. Then an affair starts. And then next thing you know, you're getting a divorce and falling apart because of that slow fade. 
That's the way they get you. They masquerade and they tell you that it's your feelings. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's all too often. That's, that's what you hear, situations like that. But what it does is it drags you away from your godly life, from your commitment to the truth of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's just one example. But in the case with false teachers, it's a, I'll just slip a little bit of this false doctrine in here and get you to believe that you know, pressing a Rima button is okay, you know, which is just another form of tarot cards. Yep. And now you're, without you even really knowing it, you're practicing divination. How's that going to work out in your Christian life? And then when somebody comes to tell you that it's wrong, oh, he's not being loving. I don't have to listen to him. I know he quotes a lot of scripture, but my teacher told me that scripture only serves to puff somebody up and they just think they're big shots. Well, that's how it all works. That's just one example of how it all works. Yep, exactly. You know, it, it's just so important. And it, 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 the hard part is, is that it's easy. It's easy to read the scripture. And then when you do go out and listen to these people teach, all of a sudden you'll start getting this little feeling in your head like, wait a minute, what did he just say? And then you can go to the scripture and you can go, wait a minute, this contradicts what this person's teaching. There you go. It's that simple. You know, instead of suppressing it, which would be grieving the Spirit, the grieving the Holy Spirit that's warning you, by ignoring that and continually listening to these tea people do what they're doing, you are grieving the Spirit. Because you're ignoring the truth to listen to lies. Yeah. You know, know, we just had... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I said, I don't doubt a bit. You know, of course a lot of these people are teaching some truth. Of course they are, but it's mixed. And it's mixed for a reason, because that's the devil's goal. People do not, I don't think people really fathom how serious it's going to be here with what's coming. You know, I'm saying be on high alert during this election, be on very high alert. You know, yeah. if something happens, you know, I, Lord willing, I hope nothing does. But when the Antichrist comes and rises up out of the pit, he's going to be beautiful. He's going to have truth, and people are going to flock to him, and they're going to worship him, and they're going to worship the beast and worship its image, and they're going to think it's God, and that entity is going to be pointing his finger up at God, the real God, blaspheming him. Yeah. And I don't think people really let that sink in, how big this event is going to be. When a lot of the prophecy warns and warns and warns, be careful, be careful, be careful of doctrines of demons. Because all these little things we see going on now, well, they're not so little, but these are the little footsteps leading up to it. The little Gnostic impartations of the fallen angel information building and building in your mind. It's stepping stones to follow the beast. And that's what it's getting to. Getting people away from their scripture and into... The mystery school teachings. That's what it's all about. You know, my friend William over there at um, Truth is Stranger Than Fiction, he does a lot of great work exposing that. A lot of fantastic study he's done. So I highly recommend checking his channel out. Excellent. You know, there was somebody that just asked a question. I think uh, it scrolled up already, but I think her name was Stacy. She said, what about video games? Yeah, video games. You and I were going to talk about that a little bit the other night on the phone. Um, there's a great documentary. I'll have to go find it. It was a study they did on video games and how it affects the frontal lobe of the brain, especially in adolescents, because I don't know how many people are aware, but the frontal lobe is not mature in the brain until you reach the age of 30. Now, what's interesting to note about that is what year was it that Jesus started preaching? 30 yeah so there's a time frame there and this is why video game companies target children and teenagers they have proven proven but you won't hear about it much that video games directly mess up the frontal cortex of your brain and mess up especially if it's violence mess up you know apathy empathy things like that it's all geared towards getting people sucked into craving violence, loving violence, loving bloodshed. And people say, oh, no, it's, it's just, you know, it's innocent. 
you know, something dawned on me last night. You know, I'm sitting on my computer watching a documentary, and I'm thinking about the cube. You know, all of us have been wondering, what is the black cube? What is it? And it just dawned on me. I'm like, what shapes are TVs and computers? They're shaped like a black cube. What do these devices do? They impart knowledge into our minds. Because what are the eyes? The eyes are the windows of the soul. And then I've been recently looking up this um, patent that I found someone sent me through Facebook about how TV monitors, computer monitors can be used for mind control, for putting stuff in. You know, it's the, yes, Saturn worship in the channel or the black mirror. Are we yep. not right now looking at a mirror in essence? You know, this right. is the most powerful tool the devil has. And I was telling Drew this the other day, how remember what life was like before the Internet. It was a lot more simple. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Way more simple. Way it is. And if I, if I could contribute, I mean, as far as a, a person is responsible for their own life, first and foremost, and just in, in keeping with uh, how fallen angels or demons masquerade, how they influence people, I would say that gaming or spending time on video games, because there are people, and we know this, but we need to repeat it, there are people that spend 8 to 12 hours a day uh, gaming. Oh, yeah. Can you fathom the time wasting that that accounts for? I mean, you and I, can you, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, I don't game, thank God. Um, some of the games out there also are so filthy. They encourage rape, murder. Uh, a lot of the occult is written into these games. Uh, people begin to blur the lines between fantasy and reality. But the amount of time that is wasted and occupied, and this is time that God gives you to seek him, uh, to work things out, to pray to him, to... Uh, commune with him, um, the, the amount of time is just mind-blowing. And these demons, uh, I feel, uh, uh, part of their job is to just make sure that they get you occupied, that you are just wasting time on meaningless actions of pressing buttons, you know, killing other soldiers and, you know, whatever, uh, battling demons in these video games. Oh, I was games. a big gamer when I was a teenager. I wasted so much time on that stuff. Right? And yeah. once again, that goes into what is the devil's duty to take your time away? You know, time I, could be better spent doing something else. They just occupy you. Yep. You know, it can be I said mean, for... We live in an interesting time where if you just look, just go out. In public and watch people what are they doing they're staring at something i mean everywhere i go it's people staring at that phone like it's just glued like a magnet to their face amazing it is it's actually shocking and it's not just the younger generation it's i mean you you see what's happening in in the uh 40 and 50 year old people they're also right on track with that kind of stuff too yep people have you know, come to the dinner table, it's no longer a family dinner anymore. It's everybody's, you know, takes a bite of their dinner and then they've got their face stuck in the phone. Yep. It's the power that the satanic realm has unleashed on mankind in this last day is truly astonishing. And we've got to wake up and get away from that stuff and put our faces into the word of God. That's my plea that i know that's your plea we have got to get ourselves into the word of god into his presence into worshiping god um, and it's just becoming rarer and rarer every day yeah because our duty we are soldiers we are soldiers in battle i mean drew said something to me the other night that just hit me you know so hard you actually would you mind sharing that what you said about the soldiers in the trenches that was such a um, perfect analogy. Soldiers in the truck. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. We were just saying how great it was, that, you know, that we met each other and and how it was like two soldiers meeting on the battlefield. We were both just exhausted, but it was oh, so okay. good, you know, to get together and just talk. But right. it's like, you know, 
put everything you think right now aside. Put everything you're doing right now aside. Whatever it is that that may be, you know, just just use your mind's eye and think. You know, we are in a battlefield, a spiritual battlefield, and we are in the trenches. We got our rifles and our bayonets on and our gas masks on, and we are scared and we are, you know, looking you know back and forth, and we we just see these insurmountable amount of of entities coming at us. I mean, that is how we need to think when we wake up in the morning. Okay, okay, I'm going to put my battle gear on. As the Bible says, our spiritual weapons, we got to check and put them on, check our sword, which would be checking the word, reading the word, and looking into that, praying. And then you're set, and you can go through your day, and it is war. We are at war every single day, every single moment. Everything we do is either a test or... Or it, it is a decision that has to be done. You know, people say, oh, you know, don't judge anything. We can't be judging. You know, you're judging. We judge all the time. We judge continually. Amen. I judge what shirt I'm going to put on in the morning. I judge what kind of coffee I'm going to have. I judge how I'm going to cook my eggs. If we're right. not to judge, then why are we doing any of this? If we're right. not to judge, what are we doing then? Amen. You know, and, and for me, it's for anybody out there who's listening, who is, you know, might, might be struggling in their walk with Jesus. It's, it always comes down to down to this in, in almost a childlike sense. Uh, you know, I struggle like anybody else. But in the end, I want to please my God. I fully realize that I live in a vehicle, this body that is designed by curse to die. Nothing I do is going to last except for what I do for Jesus Christ. If I came out with a hit album tomorrow and I had 13 number one hits and I got a billion dollars and my dream cars and whatever, none of that's going to last. The only thing that's going to last is what you do for the kingdom of God. And so how do you want to write your history as far as that goes? Do you want to be remembered as somebody who know, intentionally walked away from Jesus and fell into folly willfully, because that's what it is. People willfully walk away from the truth of Christ when they give heed to these fallen angels and these demons who whisper in their ears. Or do you want to take the hard road, which is the best road, which means that you're fully aware you're going to suffer persecution and tribulation. You're going to be hated for telling the truth. But in the end, you're going to spend eternity with a God who will look at you and say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's all I can think of. And, I, you know, I get emotional too, Kip, it, because, it, I, like you said, nobody is taking this seriously. But make no mistake, it is deadly serious. We have got to discipline ourselves. We've got to sacrifice to stay in the truth of Jesus Christ. But, oh, man, how it's going to be. You know, you got emotional a little bit ago, and all I could picture was collapsing into the arms of Jesus Christ when it's all over, collapsing into my Father's arms. When you cross that finish line, when you come across that finish line with broken legs, bruised, bloody, battered, filthy, dirty from, from the ravages of war, and you finally get to collapse into the arms of your, your God. How wonderful is that going to be? Knowing that you stood in the truth and that you didn't veer to the left or to the right. You stayed on the path and that God is pleased with you. Because that's what it's all about. It's about the glory of God. That's right. You know, and something that just came to my mind right now, you know, as part of the Matthew prophecy you know, I think it's in there. I'm getting this right. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, it says we will be delivered up, you know, for, for standing firm. We will be delivered up into these synagogues. And these synagogues will be part of this new religious order that's coming. And guess yeah. what? This new religious order that's coming, it's going to be all about love. It's going to be all about compassion and caring for others, whether it be a transsexual or a homosexual or a Muslim or a Buddhist. And when we stand firm as believers in Christ on the word, we're going to be hated, just as we're hated now. Yeah. I have hundreds of people that threaten me all the time with emails, comments, 
you're going to hell, you're a false teacher, you're doing this, you're doing that. And you know what? I forgive them. I have no hard feelings against any of you people that say those things. Water off a duck's back to me because I'm standing firm in, in the word. So I don't have to worry. I don't have any nervousness about the things that I say and teach because I, I, I'm firm in, in what Christ said. So I have no fear of that concern. Right. But just remember, we'll be delivered up. And the world is already doing this love, love thing right now. There, you hear it on the news all the time. It's all about love. I just watched some protesters going over some bathroom thing where she had a sign that said, Jesus is love. Jesus wants boys to use girls' bathrooms and girls to use boys' bathrooms. You know, have you ever heard of anything so utterly ridiculous? But that's wow. what's going on. These are the times we're living in. You're waiting for the end of days. We're in it. We're knee deep in it right now. It's here. It's right in front of our faces. And I'll tell you what, Kip, it's accelerating. Oh, is it ever accelerating? It's accelerating, and it's going to really start moving fast here. And I think uh, we're in for a fireworks display, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah, that's what it's been building up to. Yeah, and we're going to see this stuff start to get worse and worse. When you got, and, and again, this is how Satan uses his pawns. When you get a guy like Bruce Springsteen who cancels concerts because your grandpa can't go pee in the same bathroom with my seven-year-old granddaughter, what in the world is going on? Exactly. Is that really a protest? But no, he's got to do what he's told to do because then... This issue is brought to the limelight, and while all of a sudden it becomes discrimination because, you know, Grandpa Bob has got hurt feelings because he can't pee with little girls in the same bathroom. Astonishing. Wrong becomes right, and right becomes wrong. We're living in these times, brother. Well, I used to wonder about that verse in Isaiah, you know, woe to them that, you know, that replace light for dark and dark for light. I used to always wonder, I'm like, how is that going to work? Now I see it. Right. Now I see exactly what that meant. Once again, proving God's word true. You know, we see it all the time now. These wow. crazy things on television that we know are wicked, evil practices being said that they're good. And I I don't even know if I should really call these people Christians, but these so-called Christians that are supporting it, well, you know, Jesus is all about love, so we got to love these transsexuals. we got to love them. Um, no, we're supposed to reprove them. We're supposed to reprove the works of darkness. We're supposed to stand firm and say, no, no, we're not going to tolerate this. If you want to do that, that's your choice, but I don't have to be part of it. And I don't have to support it. That's Amen. the biggest problem I have with these people. You know, saying, well, you got to, you know, just be loving in that. No, I don't have to support any of it. I don't have to have anything to do with it because I don't believe in that. And this country, the United States of America, was founded on religious freedom. Well, guess what? We don't have that anymore. People That's forget gone. that. It is gone. Yeah. Look at what they're it's... doing on YouTube. Look at what's going on. The YouTube heroes. Anyone say Gestapo? That's what it is. Yeah. Do you think these people are going to be out there flagging um, copyrighted movies and hackers and... And out of control gamers like Keemstar, no. They're going to be going after the Christian channels. They're going to be going after the preaching channels. That's exactly what's going to be targeted first. Anyone that speaks out against this coming New World religion or the gay agenda or the transsexual agenda, anybody that's going to have anything negative about that, I guarantee you, flag, your videos are done. You're going to lose your account because you're not showing love and peace. But what did the Bible warn about? When they shall say, peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. Get yeah. that seared into your mind, because that's what the world is doing. This peace and security that's coming, that they want so bad, it's not, it's not the way God intended it to be at all. It is not. We do not break bread with the enemy. We do not sit down at the dinner table with liars and murderers and thieves and fornicators. 
and say that we love one another. That is not what Christ meant. We rebuke yeah. those people in hopes that they repent and turn. How else right. do you teach the lost? Yeah. I mean, it's not, a, you know, here's the thing, Kip, what the world, uh, the difference between what the world thinks. With the world, it's all about the people. But with true believers, it's all about God. That's right. That's the best way to put it right there. God established, created an order. And I, for one, will follow his order um, because without order, there's chaos. And that only holds true in the kingdom of God. In the end, we know already that God wins. Jesus yep. Christ is victorious. The only question now is, are you going to cross that finish line, which is a free invitation, by the way, for everybody listening. 100% free. Are, 100% free. Jesus Christ, what a God we have. He created you. He sustained you. And when everything went sour, he, he took came. the punishment away. <laughs> he came and said, I will pay your punishment. Yeah. I mean, what, what more, <laughs> what more can a loving God do? My goodness. My, I, I can't say that. Well, don't, wow. you, don't you love how <laughs> Satan has flipped that around too? Right. You know, now we see people doubting that like, oh, well, you know, that's human sacrifice and that's just awful. No. No greater gift can a man give to another than to sacrifice his life for another. That is He solid. laid his life. Laid his life down for us, man. I cannot imagine. Uh, I, I, in, in, in your wildest fantasies, we could not project a more righteous, honest, wonderful, loving, long-suffering, perfect God than what we have. Exactly. We, we, we still can't even comprehend a fraction of of how that is in our fleshly minds. It's, it's, I know we can't. I know that when Jesus says, I go away to prepare a place um, for those of you that love me, and I'll come back and receive you, and I'm paraphrasing, but we, uh, he also says, it is not entered into the mind nor the heart of what I have waiting for those that love me. And I'm sorry, I'm, I am paraphrasing that, but we all know what it says. When you get your inheritance, it will be, I don't even think our minds in, in this current state could even come close to comprehending what he's got waiting for those who love him, you know? Oh, yeah, our minds can't fathom it. But boy, I tell you what, when that day does come, we're going to look back at this and go, man, I'm glad we listened. Wow. You know, it just, Glory it's to God. Gonna just jump out of you it's going to be so amazing you're going to be like man thank god that i listened thank god that i followed his word and his instructions because it this is. is so worth it. i mean think of the best day of your life the best bestest best day that you've ever had in your life and i would have to say amplify that by a million yeah. that's what it's going to be like i mean we cannot Absolutely. process it in this carnal mindset that's why Satan showers us with this crap, with right. money and, and you know, this and that and video games, TV, entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. Right. And it's so exactly. easy to fall into it because it keeps us distracted. Because Satan's seen heaven. He knows what it looks like there. He knows. And he also knows that he can never go back there. So he does everything he can to make sure that we can't get there. That's what he, he wants, wants to, to do. Take, he wants to take you down. Yep. Um, but, hey, you know, I'll testify, and I know you will, and, and uh, there's a few others uh, that stand truth, stand in the truth of Christ that uh, I will wait. I will wait on God. I will trust in God, and I will do to the best of my ability in this, like I said, this dying vehicle that I live in, um, until I take that last breath, uh, knowing that I am a wretched sinner and unworthy of anything God has to offer, but I will do the best I can to stand in the truth of Christ and pray for mercy. Paul says, work out your salvation with trembling and fear. Um, and that's what I do. These people, these false teachers, these false prophets who do not have your best interest at heart, they've already seared their conscience. Yep. They've already gone off the path. They are doing it for the filthy lucre, they're doing it for the praises of men, and they will get their just reward. But as for me, uh, when I hear something that doesn't sound right, I'm going to say, no, 
I'm going to open up my Bible, I'm going to confirm it, and I'm going to stand in the truth of Christ. And I would certainly encourage everyone else out there to please start doing the same. Mark those who are preaching a false doctrine, expose that doctrine as we're told to do in Ephesians 5.11, and then move on and give it to God. You know what I mean? We pray for our enemies. We pray for these false teachers. Um, sometimes you say stuff, there's nothing more that you can say. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to listen to sound doctrine. They don't want to be corrected. Uh, so you've done all you can do, and we just move on and, and give it into the hands of God because we're not God, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it is our duty as soldiers. I mean, we need to think about it as we're reading the scriptures, taking, that's our marching orders. And like Drew said, when we hear people teaching something that's wrong or something that is from a wicked book or whatever, call them out. Don't sit there and take it. We don't need to sit and take it in the back seat. We need to say, hey, you're teaching stuff that's wrong. Show them the scriptures. Call them out. Hold them accountable. Right. Say something. Do something. Right. This is our duty here in these final days. You know, as we get closer and closer, it's our duty to keep sharpening our swords and grinding that axe. That's what we got to do because we are at war. We're in battle with these people and we need to care for these people and pray for them and work on them. They're not going to change if you keep giving them praises. They're not going to recheck themselves like, hmm, am I doing something wrong? They're not going to do that if you're not reproving them. You don't have to attack them. You don't have to call them names. Quote the scripture. That's the weapon. It cuts. You keep doing that to these people and saying, look at this verse. Look at this verse. You are wrong. You are wrong. You're not saying they're wrong. The scripture is. There and you guess go. What? If they get enough of that, they may check themselves and then they may turn and repent. That's the goal. That's Amen. what we need to be doing. It's not about Amen. us and our opinions. It's about what the Word says. Yeah. Be bold. Be bold. Be bold. We're, we're told to be as bold as lions. Yeah. Absolutely. Well said. And again, uh, to, to reemphasize or repeat, rather, what you said, it's not you telling them that they're wrong. It is the scriptures, and it's our duty. We're told in Ezekiel, if you don't do this, if you don't warn the people, you're going to have, you're going to, uh, their blood is going to be required of you. Now, if you warn somebody and they listen, good, you've won back a brother or sister. But if you warn them and they don't listen, well, you're off the hook. You did your job. But to not warn these people, that is the definition of no love. Yep, that, that's not showing love right there. Amen. You know, I mean, Matthias checks me and I check him. I mean, that's what, you know, that's what we're supposed to do as brothers in Christ. There's things that I've told him and he's like, wait a minute, where's that in the scripture? And I'm like, um, I think it's here. <laughs> and then I go and look and I'm like, he's like, where did you get that from? I said, well, I heard it long ago. And he's like, well, it's not scriptural. I'm like, you're right. It's not. So now I'm going to quit saying that. I would have continued to say these, these things had i not been corrected when someone corrects me i love it especially if they come with a scripture and say hey wait a minute wait a minute kip you're doing this wrong okay let's go to the word and then thank you thank you is what i say right and you know that's why you know i love matthias because he will flat out tell me if i've said or done something wrong he will take me to the scripture point out and say look at this and vice versa that's how we right. keep the checks and balances. That's how we keep each other from falling into traps and snares of the devil is through correction. And, and so what, what's good about that, and actually, it's so sad that we have to say that that's good because that's the way it always should be, uh, holding each other accountable. Um, but what's wonderful about that is within your ministry then, because you've got solid Bible-believing, truth-holding uh, brothers and sisters, is that uh, God is going to move your ministry forward. Um, it, that's just the way it is. I mean, God has uh, got to be very pleased when he looks down and he sees 
um, soldiers standing in the truth of Christ. I mean, my goodness, my, I can't say that dark on it. <laughs> I have to start saying wow. <laughs> Just say so, wow, I guess. <laughs> but what a concept, right? I mean, it's 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 a sad statement about us, but um, unfortunately, in these end times, God saw it that it was going to be like this, and now it's up to us to grab hold of the reins, make the commitment to God, and stand in His truth realizing that there are fallen angels and demons that are masquerading uh, in within the music industry, within the, the movie industry, within all forms of entertainment, within video games, in many of your friends, your colleagues, the people you work with. Uh, he's going to use every tool that he can to get you to slip. And so what we need to do, what I would say is if we could all just maybe even do a Bible study on all the warnings in the New Testament, the warnings of being deceived. I think that's, I'm going to do a video on them. The next video is to just come out with a plethora of scripture um, on all the warnings that we are supposed to be heeding to be not deceived. Be not deceived. Just beat that into your head and uh, just make sure that you got your guard up and, of course, read the scriptures so that you are well-seasoned able to give an account for the joy that you have within you. So there you go. Amen to that. I mean, that's just so, it's so important. We just, we can't stress it enough how important it is. You know, that's pretty much all the Bible warns about. That's why this is called, that's why I called myself the Deuteronomy 13 Watchman. Because when I read Deuteronomy 13, I'm like, wow, this is pretty heavy duty this is everything you need to know about how to watch out for these dreamers and these false teachers and these demons that are playing around like they're angels of light i mean people don't yeah. understand that you know i have watched these people that channel jesus or they they summon angels you know they're, they're actually summoning these beings of light and they're talking to them and they're getting all these wonderful stories from these beautiful places well the second heaven, which is the realm that Satan and them operate in, it's kind of a muddled up mess, you know, with them in there. You can be taken to the second heaven and shown beautiful things. But guess what? That's not God's kingdom. That's not the third high heaven because no flesh can go before God and no flesh has ascended into heaven, as the scriptures say. Right. It's outside of linear time. We can't go there. Jesse Duplantis did not go up to heaven in a freaking ski cart or whatever it was. Trolley cart. Yeah, trolley cart. <laughs> ding, ding, it ding, don't ding. work that way. All aboard! You know, getting back to that a little bit, you know, when he said that Jesus was crying and he had to hug and console Jesus, I just lost. I was like, what? Blasphemy. Right. Utter blasphemy that... So let's talk about oh. that, Kip. What, by him saying that, what do his thousands and tens of thousands of followers then believe? That Jesus is kind of a wimp. Right. And that he's That he needs flawed. to be consoled by a carnal man. By his creation. By his own creation. Now that is a common, almost, almost daily video that Claire does from Still Small Voice, that the first thing she says is that he needs us to do things, which is a lie. Uh, the second thing is is that she's testified several times that she's had to console Jesus. Yep. There, 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 Jesus. Pat on the back. It's okay. Oh, boy, I can see Jesus is a real mess, and I'm going to have to take over the reins here for a, a couple of days, I guess, while Jesus pulls it together because he's flawed. That's what she's teaching her followers, 19,000 followers. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the danger of a false teacher. Now, we know that Claire is being visited by demons, by uh, familiar spirits, and this is what they're telling her. And then, they're, by the way, they're laughing at her. Oh, you better believe they're laughing. I mean, just put it, yourself in their position. These entities, they, they speak to one another all the time. I mean... I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that weird show called Millennium with Frank Black. There was an episode on there that 
it just struck me so hard when I watched it. It was called um, The Devil Called or something. And what it was was three demons in a coffee shop. They looked like humans to the regular people, but when the camera would show what they really were, they were these red-looking devil creatures. And all they did in the episode was they sat there and talked about how they trick mankind into committing suicide, committing sins, and they were laughing and laughing, and they were telling these stories of what they had done to this person or that person to get them to falter or fall. And one guy, they got him to commit suicide, and they were laughing. And the thing this one demon said in the show was, this guy, he's like, he got him to jump out the window and commit suicide. He said the funniest moment, he said, when that fat you-know-what was falling to his death was that right before he hit, he realized how life was worth living, but ha <laughs> ha! It was too late. I'm like, that is so true. That's what these beings do. Yeah. They it's, love it's, every minute of it. They thrive and sure. feed off of, of, of bad fruit. Yeah. Yeah, and it's absolutely true. And like you said at the beginning of this uh, live cast, it's a, um, they've got to tell you. Yep. You know, in, in almost 100% of the time, they're in some way or form, they're telling you what they're doing. You know, when, when uh, and I hate to keep coming back to her, but she's a great example, is one of the most dangerous women on YouTube. When Claire comes out and sings a song by a known Wiccan, she's telling her followers who she is. Yep. But right nobody, nobody caught it because they're not looking, they're not well studied, and they're getting their ears tickled. But she, make no mistake, people like her tell their followers what they're doing. Yeah, that's why I made that point in that video I made called, you know, time manipulation or mind manipulation. I told people, you know, you watch that movie, now you see me. Listen to what they're saying and doing in that movie. That's exactly how the fallen angels and demons operate. Well, yeah. While they're doing flashy stuff right in front of your face, the obvious sign is hanging right over your head. It's in the background. And they're just like, hey, 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 don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. You know, but right. that's the thing. It's, it's right in plain sight, but how many people notice it? Right. You know, someone and, brought up, you know, look at Trump. Trump and Pence. <laughs> Trumpets? <laughs> really? That. Yeah, right? I mean, it's, once again, an obvious thing right in front of your face. It's the first time I've heard that. Yeah, I mean, I just found that pretty striking, you know. That's what I, that's what I look for now. I look for the things that are just blatantly in the open. You know, while yeah. meanwhile, everyone else is like, we got to dig in deep and decode, man. I'm like, it's right there. Right. Out in your face. I mean, go and drive around town. Look at billboards. You want to talk about the all-seeing eye? It's everywhere. You want to talk about the snake eating its tail? It's on your computers. Ever see that little loading icon? What do you think that is? Yeah. It's ev These symbols are everywhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. Totally agree. I, uh, I mean, especially in this day and age, you know, um, and again... It just uh, should cause everybody out there to um, fear God, just to stand in his truth and to draw closer unto Jesus Christ. Because as we talked uh, previously, it's going to start accelerating. Things are going to start getting worse in every aspect. I'm talking with the weather, with the governments, with the peoples of the earth, uh, with demonic activity. Um, we see it every day as another celebrity did something. Look at, I mean... In this day and age, just as a sign of the time, when you prop up a whore, and I mean a living whore like Kim Kardashian, to be admired, to be looked upon as somebody who's actually, what, done something? She was thrust into the spotlight by her own mother who released an amateur sex tape, and now she is held on a pedestal with her own fashion line as somebody of accomplishment to be revered an actual horror it is astonishing can anybody add anything to that <laughs> yeah i mean it's just wow this is what is happening in this world just 40 years ago she literally could have been put in prison for that sec that amateur sex tape she would have been ostracized from society she would have been blacklisted just short of having a giant a placed on her and forced to wear that but just 40 years later 
she is one of the richest, most top celebrities on the face of the earth. And nobody bats an eye. This is an astonishing sign of the times that we live in. Now, of course, I'm just talking about her as one. But now she's got a whole family of whores who is teaching our youth in this country and around the world to be little whores. And, and nobody can see this. Nobody bats an eye. God has been thrown out. There are no morals and values. The whores have taken over, just in that one aspect. Yep. I, you know, I know we get on, we try to preach what we can, we try to say what we can, we try to block and defend, preach the truth of Christ. But people got to start looking around at, like you said before, what are they letting into their homes? What are they letting in through their stereos? What are they letting in um, in the form of books, newspapers, everything like that? Let's put it this way. What is Satan's title? Prince of the power of the air. What runs through the air? Radio waves. Radio waves, yeah. Wi-Fi. I mean, I just read on, you know, the news segment we did last night about now they have technology that you can think in the computer rights. That's one step closer to the devil getting into the temple, which is our, our, our minds. Satan has wanted to get into our heads forever because he can't read our thoughts. Only God can. And that's yeah. where he wants to be. He wants to get into the holies of holies, which is our minds, because God said in the scripture, Know ye not that you are a temple, and I dwell within you. When that veil tore, when Jesus died on the cross, it was done, man. Now God could be with us through his son. The devil hates that, and he wants to get in there. That's yeah. what this technology is building for. It's getting closer and closer. I was telling Drew about some of the scary stuff that they're doing with these helmets and this virtual reality. I mean, there are people that play games that some of them have a hard time struggling, with wondering what is reality. They're so infused with it. So just imagine someone being addicted to a virtual reality helmet like an Oculus. I mean, South Park did a, a, a parody about it, showing how these kids were like trapped in what looked to be like a second heaven. They couldn't get out of it. They didn't know what reality they were in anymore. We're getting uh, to that point, people. We're getting to that area here where that is going to probably happen. I don't want any yeah. part of it. I won't have any part of it. If it gets to a point where I have to stay off the internet and not have any technology around me if i'm told to do that i will do that because it's getting to a, a a boiling point a danger point i mean look what they're doing with the crispr technology now they can make smart babies yeah mm -hmm. um it's getting spooky right and here's the thing and i know you know this kid but i say it for the benefit of those who are listening they've got stuff in the background already they're already doing it there's stuff that we would probably blow our minds if we knew that it already existed. Oh, yeah. Uh, Technology-wise, genetics-wise, all that stuff is already being done. And uh, I, I'm sure it won't be long till we actually start to see this stuff come, uh, come public. You know, people forget, what was the days of Noah like? You know, we look at what they did with ancient aliens, trying to blame all this hidden technology on beings from another planet or galaxy, whatever. That's all bunko. That was the fallen angels. They were down here doing this. They had very high technology going on back then. Look at the structures. Look at the things that were being built that have been, what, what they have shown us, you know, what we haven't seen, who knows. But the technology that was going on in the days of Noah is what's being rebirthed now. Same stuff. No new thing under the sun. This technology is... Same thing that was going on back then. I mean, I, f I firmly believe that the pyramids were psychic amplifiers that emitted a frequency field that did who knows what to those that came in the city or around it. I mean, w frequencies are, are very powerful. They can alter moods. They can alter brain waves. They can kill you. I mean, it's powerful stuff. It's subtle stuff that most people don't generally talk about. They're more worried about machine guns and hand grenades and everything else. But there are weapons that can be used with this technology coming out now that would just blow your mind. Right. You know, the scariest movie I watched recently was the movie called Cell, about how cell phones 
emit this frequency that makes people go crazy and kill themselves and kill other people. And these people were just mindlessly bobbing their heads and rotating and marching in a circle around these cell phone towers like a big eye. And I just got chills from it. I'm like, this is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, the movie was was just, I was just like, this is what the devil would want. This is what this is what he would want to see to mock God. Look at what I did to your creations. Look what I did to them. That's what he does. I mean, just the motion of that guy's head just bobbling around and the, all these people are shoulder to shoulder marching in circles. But in his head, he thinks he's having, walking down the road with his son and it's a beautiful sun shining day. That's what scared me because I thought that's what happened in the movie. You know, he's he found his son, his lost son, and he's having a good time, a great day, and then this camera fades out through his eyes and he's actually one of the zombies marching around the tower. Jeez. So um, wow. that's why I'm saying this technology is going to get to a point where us believers are going to have to put our foot down and say no more. I was telling Drew about the movie Surrogates with, you know, um, oh, what's his name? Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. How they had dread zones, and the dread zones were Christians that refused to partake of the technology, refused it. And they lived in these quarantine zones. No one was allowed in or out. And I thought, wow, you know, it may get to that point. It may happen. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I, I think we will be alive for it, though. I think it's accelerating that fast. This yeah. world is being stretched in its resources. Uh, we've got the problem with GMOs. We've got uh, all the man-made man uh, sicknesses that have been created by mankind so that we could all become dependent on drugs. And you're just seeing it stretched out so much. I can't see how much more this world can actually take before something's got to give. Yep. But what it does, I, I just pray that all of you are grounded in the truth of Christ. Because then you you know that they may be able to kill your body, but they certainly can't touch your soul, and you will have your God uh, taking care of you one way or the other. If you have to be martyred for Christ, hey, think about what Paul be said. Be happy, right? Uh, your life doesn't really begin until you start your eternity. And uh, I would highly recommend and testify to please, Please uh, do your eternity with Jesus Christ and uh, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Live for him. Love your God like you never have before. Commit, commit to him. Be on your guard. Stand strong in the truth, truth of Christ uh, no matter what. No matter if it means you're going to lose your family, your friends, uh, if you're going to be uh, you know, separated at work, that's okay. Stand in the truth of Christ. And you're going to be just fine. You know, one of the greatest lies Satan, you know, gets people to believe is this fear of death. That's another false teaching that we should be afraid of death when throughout the scripture we read Jesus conquered it. He took care of it. We, believing on Christ, that we have nothing to fear with dying. No fear is required with death. That's our exit point. When we die, we know where we're going. So what is there to be worried about <laughs> If you Amen. have issues with death, if you are truly worried about death, then you got some spiritual issues you need to work out. You need to pray and study the scriptures. Because when the scripture yeah. says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? It means that. Amen. Jesus took that sting away so we don't have to go through it. Our death Amen. is our rebirth in the kingdom with Christ. Amen. Well said. And with that, Kip, I'm going to have to wrap it up on my end here. Yeah, we're going on two and a half hours, so that should be that's pretty good. I mean, we covered <laughs> pretty broad range of stuff, so I mean, it's been a great, great evening, very, very uplifting for sure. Amen. And I just want to tell all of you out there, my brothers and sisters in Christ, um, you know, uh, God bless you all. Uh, I'm. Like Kip said, I also love you all, and uh, if I warn somebody or I call somebody out, it's out of love. You know, it's not uh, 
you know, of course I'm not perfect, but I'm going to stand in the truth of Christ. And if I hear a ridiculous doctrine, I'm going to call it out. But I'm going to use scripture. I'm not going to do it by my own power. I'm going to use uh, the scripture of the Lord. And so I, I just want to thank you, Kip, for having me on. Absolutely. And uh, stand. Uh, I know you're going to stand strong in the, the truth of Christ. And I just pray that all your listeners would as well. So, Absolutely. Because the thing that's so important here, folks, is that this stuff will stick to you and the word will stick to you. And when this day comes, whatever it may be, whether it be, you know, some catastrophic event, you're going to be out there in the world. If, if Let's say we get thrown in some FEMA camps. There's going to be people in there that are going to be scared to death. They may not be saved. Guess what? You will have the knowledge and the ability now to help those people and save those people. That's what it is. Think of yourself as you are a soldier walking around and you're holding that sword and you'll be out there to help others. That's our duty here in these end times is to stand strong and not be moved because Christ is our foundation. And as long as he's our foundation, we got nothing to worry about. There's not a darn thing the devil can do. Nothing. Amen. Well said. God bless you, brother. All right. Thanks, Drew. It was good having you tonight. God bless and take care. All right. Talk to you all later. God bless. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, we'll be having another show here, probably in another, maybe tomorrow or Monday. Um, like I said, as long as I get you know free time and I got people that want to come on, we're just going to do a show. Because um, I just feel that with the way things are going in the world right now, it's really important. And is if I have the time, I'm just going to do a show, and I'm just going to just let the Spirit lead and teach scriptures. Because all we can do right now is just keep imparting that truth, keep imparting the scriptures into our soul so we have that ammunition and it's all in us and with us. Because the day may come when we're not going to have a Bible or a computer and we're not going to be able to read from something so we need to go, you know, with what we can impart in us. But anyways, thank you all for listening tonight. Thanks to everybody in the chat room. Um, it's been a wonderful evening. God bless you all. Um, I love everybody out there, and we will see you again on the next episode. Good night, and God bless.